Raise your hand if you or someone close to you has a food allergy. Don't fret, you're not alone. In the last 20 years, the prevalence of food allergies has increased by 50%. Within that same time span, Trina and peanut allergies alone have more than tripled. And I'm a contributing member to this statistic. After going into my third anaphylactic shock, yes, my third one, I decided enough was enough. So what did I do? First, let me take you back to high school. Being a student athlete with a severe Trina allergy, it was harder for me to find a delicious, affordable, and high protein bar that didn't contain any tree nuts. Rather than giving up, I gathered up a well-rounded team and we made our own nut-free protein bar. We didn't stop there. What about those who have allergies beyond tree nuts? People who just choose to follow a specific diet. Thus, Mod Bars was born. Mod Bars is an affordable, filling, delicious snack bar company that caters to individuals' dietary restrictions or wants while maintaining the premium quality of a high-priced brand. We started out with two nut-free protein bars, chocolate and vanilla. As demand grew, so did our creativity. Two new trail mix bars, one fruit, one cinnamon, and finally, we came out with a s'mores dessert bar and a coffee energy bar. Currently, we're working toward making gluten-free flavors. While we have our own product line, we've made vegan versions of our existing flavors as requested by some of our recurring customers. In the future, we plan on implementing complete customization. I'll now pass it on to Joseph to talk about the snack bar market. Thanks, Jeff. This is what the current snack bar market looks like. After analyzing our potential market, we decided to cater towards members of Gen Z with dietary restrictions who lead an active and health conscious lifestyle. As Max will expand upon later, this is our current strategy, but we understand that our potential market is wider than just Gen Z. With the snack bar industry being a heavily populated and crowded space, you may be asking yourself, why now? Why start a business when there are already so many other snack bar brands already out there? Well, here's why. Like Jeff said, food allergies are increasing. Consumers are caring more and more about what's going into their food, and when we surveyed our consumer base, the majority of people answered yes to a question asking if they cared about what was going into their food nutritionally. Additionally, customization is on the rise, with places such as Chipotle, Subway, and other customizable food restaurants becoming continually and increasingly popular. It is no surprise that 80.3% of consumers that we surveyed answered yes to wanting customization in their snack bars. Especially during this current pandemic, college students, our target market, are concerned with the price of their food above almost any other factor. Finally, people are seeking entertainment through their phones now more than ever, given the current climate. I can't tell you how many hours I've spent looking at dumb memes or watching stupid YouTube videos during this quarantine. Our brand is focused on providing more than just a snack. We want to entertain our customers with, through social media content that is funny, relatable, and engaging to our consumer base. Here we have a lineup of our chocolate protein bar compared to relevant competitors. In terms of nutrition and price, we stack up against the competition. We beat the popular snack bar brands in terms of sugar, protein, and fiber, and we have the lowest price per ounce of any bar in our comparable market. The fact is, in the market of high-protein, nutrition-focused bars, we are right there with our largest competition. I'll now pass it off to Max, where he will explain our business model. Thank you, Joe. We sold in two different bar forms, individual bars at $2 a piece, and a 12-bar for $20 bulk option. And as you can see here on these graphics, our gross profit margins show scalability in the long term. Moving on to our financial models, here's what we've done so far. In 2017, we continued tweaking our recipes as we sold to fellow high school students. In 2018, we moved into a commercial kitchen and purchased insurance, giving us more overhead. In 2019, we finally turned a sizable profit, selling 2,500 bars through hand-to-hand -hand selling at College Park and retail at our local swimming club snack bar. We continue this momentum into 2020 with the launch of our website, but we had to shut down in March due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Now here's what we project. Although we will hit the ground running in September, we do not expect to make up all of our costs from our hiatus by the end of the year. In, the, in each of the next two years, however, we expect to double our sales from our 2019 mark of 2,500 bars, following a trend similar to what we've experienced thus far. We plan to do this through an intensive social media campaign, more professional and visually appealing packaging, and added distribution channels such as farmers markets. We will also build a stronger foothold in the UMD Greek-like community, 
which Wyatt will talk about more later. Finally, a little bit about us. Our team is composed of five former student athletes now spread across three universities. With his severe tree nut allergy, Jeff Su, our CEO, is the visionary behind this company. I am the COO and have experience working in food prep at the Campus Kitchen at Washington University in St. Louis, as well as the World Central Kitchen in DC. Nate Stevens, our CFO, manages our budget and financial models. Wyatt Talcott, our CMO, uses his artistic and video editing skills to manage our social media and optimize our outreach strategy. And finally, Joseph Olenek, our CTO, has software development experience from his previous startup. I will now pass it off to Wyatt, who will reflect on this past summer and look forward to the coming months. Thank you, Max. Chirp Startup uh, has provided us a great opportunity to not only grow our business, but also look inwards and learn a bit about ourselves as entrepreneurs. Perhaps the number one thing that we've learned is that we do indeed enjoy what we do. Uh, we can work efficiently from nine to five. We can have fun doing so. And based on the input we've received along the way from people both within and beyond our field, it seems that we are on the right track. Number two, social media is a science and not to be overlooked or underestimated. Across only six platforms, every algorithm is different, requiring a concerted and intentional effort on each in order to see any meaningful gains. Now, while we have been in production for some time, it's increasingly clear to us that market research and financial forecasting are two crucial elements to starting a business that in all honesty, we've overlooked until recently. Now, after sending out a lengthy consumer survey and constructing a detailed financial model, we feel much more knowledgeable about our business. Another valuable lesson is that our titles and roles are very much subject, subject to change as we grow the business. As founders, we need to do what's in the best interest of the company, which means being versatile and not getting attached to our current roles. Lastly, a great revelation we've made over the years is the sheer difficulty of scaling organically, that is without much spendable capital. Finally, thanks to the grant provided by Turf Startup, which is really the first amount of seed money we've received, we now have a much larger financial pool to work with, which has helped us considerably in only a few short weeks. Now, here's a quick look at some of our satisfied customers and what they have to say about our product. As you can see here, uh, we've both sold to and followed up with different demographics and age groups, and have gotten good reception from all of them. For example, Andrea here is a local swim mom, and she's even in the audience, I believe. Um, both Helen and Luke are college students, uh, each of whom belong to their own clubs and organizations on campus. And again, these are just a few of many examples. Now, looking to the immediate future, uh, we want to do more to accelerate our growth on college campuses in particular. So to start, we're looking forward to introducing a new Maryland-themed bar with a current title of Terrapin Tracks. Um, on top of this, we want to add, uh, allow a variety pack option on our website where you can order a smaller, more diverse group of flavors, as well as a subscription service that will provide bars at a regular rate, either daily or weekly, and a care package system aimed at parents who want to make sure their kids are fed the best. Finally, Here's a look at what you can find on our social media. You can follow us at Modbars to see more. And with that, we very much look forward to your questions. Thank you all for listening.